you are not watching a video game. The moving dots are red drum. Here's what one of them looks like. The fish on the screen are also very much alive. And these fish have had radio tracking devices implanted inside them. Each device sends out a unique signal. Call the picture a digital snapshot of the life of a fish swimming around the mud flats, oyster reefs, and seagrass in the New River near Jacksonville. And so these tagging approaches let us be with the fish sort of all the time, uh, understand what habitat it's using at different times of day or different seasons or as it grows, uh, and then add other experiments to try to de determine if they're feeding or they're avoiding predators. And what about those habitats? Is it the structure of the habitat? Is it the productivity of the habitat? Um, what is the fish benefiting from or not benefiting from by having uh, a mosaic of different habitats such as seagrass and mudflat and oyster reef and saltwater? The New River is a tidal estuary. The water is brackish, a mix of salt and fresh water, that is relatively clean and incredibly productive. Catch and release studies like this tell researchers that flounder, crab, and spot are just some of the aquatic species living beneath the surface. What our lab tends to focus on more than anything is, is habitat value. But there's a limit to what scientists can learn by simply catching and looking at fish. They can learn about the fish tail. We can't see through the ocean and the fish are basically invisible to us. If I was studying a tree, I could tag a tree uh, and I could come back the next day and if the tree's not there, I assume it's dead. With the fish, the fish just may have moved on. And the fish may be dead. The coolest thing on the drum is their spots. But they can't learn about the fish story, where it goes, what it's doing. Some of them have like five or six, some of them have one. So Dr. Joel Fodry and his team from the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill Institute of Marine Sciences are fishing for knowledge. Managers, the general public, scientists, we all seem to agree that, that habitat has value for fish. Without good habitat, you, you lose fish. But quantitatively, we can't really predict how much habitat equals how many fish or how much fish production. And there's a number of reasons for that. Um, fish have individual behavior, uh, their seasonality, their size-specific habitat use. The team is studying the connection between a healthy habitat and healthy fish populations. That fish had a ton of spots, yeah. A morning of checking nets on the river produced only two red drum large enough to be tagged. We'll do a, a a procedure, a surgical procedure on the fish, uh, just like you or I would have done if we were to go uh, have a surgery. We'll anesthetize the fish so that they're basically under and they're not uh, feeling anything. Um, we cut them open and we put this uh, the transmitter inside and suture everything back up and give them uh, time to recover and then release them back into the into the river. The bath that he's putting the fish in is um, an induction anesthetic bath. So it's got a, uh, a dosage of anesthesia that is manageable for the fish so that it doesn't kill the fish, but it will put it under and, and basically asleep. The fish will roll over and go belly up and he's not dead, he's just basically sleeping and you can still see his gills moving and we know that you know his bodily functions are still operating as normal. He's just basically feeling nothing at the time. Um, as you can see, he's doing right now, he's starting to, uh, to turn himself over, which gives us an indication of when we can start the procedure. Speed is essential. And once on the table, we also maintain a flow of water over the fish's gills um, to keep oxygen provided to the fish during the surgery. The saran wrap uh, provides for a uh, more of a sterile surface. Um, than the foam that the fish is on. A small incision in the belly is made. The transmitter is turned on and then inserted. And so it basically just sits right in the belly cavity of the fish there. It presses up on some of the, the organs of the fish, but uh, it, it doesn't do any damage to them. And there's been quite a few studies on procedures like this, and it doesn't seem to uh, affect the fish's behavior, and they do really good with survivorship. The incision is then sutured. We're kind of on essentially the cutting edge in some ways because we're finally able to start to say specifically about what fish are doing 
on a daily basis, on a minute-by-minute -minute basis, which previously you would, you would put traps out or nets, catch a fish in a specific habitat, assume that fish is spending a lot of their time in that habitat and feeding or, or seeking refuge. But now we can actually quantify how much time each fish is spending in each kind of habitat. A fish is then measured, weighed. 2.1 and a small piece of the tail is clipped off for DNA analysis. I think we're really moving forward in terms of understanding how fish use habitat and, and, and what components of habitat are most important to them. A separate visible tag called a spaghetti tag is also inserted. The tag asks anyone who catches the fish to notify the research team. That's a 4.4 pound, 4.25 pound fish. The entire procedure, from sedation to recovery, takes about 20 minutes. One of the keys to the research, of course, is getting fishermen, like those who are in these docks, to return those tags. Some don't. They're worried about more regulations. Scientists are quick to point out the better data they have on the fish, the better the management decision for the fisheries that can be made. So they are now offering rewards to fishermen who return the tags. So that's fish number 61877. Dr. Jeff Buckle with North Carolina State University's Center for Marine Sciences and Technology also uses spaghetti tags and tracking devices. So we're interested in knowing death rates of fish um, to help in the management of the populations. Fish can be killed by natural causes, such as a cold snap, man-made causes, such as pollution, there's also predators, and fishing is also counted in mortality rates. If you find that that total rate of death is too high to keep the population sustainable, in other words, the population is in decline, then we would have to back off of the fishing mortality rate, which is the death rate that we can control with management. And if the popul conversely, if the um, total mortality rate is low, relative to what it can take and the population is growing, then we could um, relax um, fish, fishing regulations and, and increase the rate of fishing. Scientists are now tracking about 100 tagged red drums swimming around the New River estuary. The findings so far? One neat conclusion is that uh, the fish have uh, as much personality as people do in terms of some like to move all the time, be on the go, some are homebodies and like to stay put. 